Okay, good morning, everybody. It's Monday, March 15th, 7.40 a.m., and it looks like prices of Bitcoin rolled right inside the previous high of 58,000 all the way down to uh, 56.1, and they went to a low of about 54,500. So it seems like, you know, very, very big sell-off, right? Uh, lots of cleanup over here in terms of leverage. Uh, now the question is, okay, well, what do we do from here? Well, to understand that, I think we've got to start digging into the smaller time frames, and of course, understanding what the other metrics of the market are saying. Okay, um, if y'all remember yesterday, right? Um, you know, I stated that the contrarian trade to take yesterday, contrarian trade yesterday around here, was that okay? Well, say if, for example, you are not a believer that this breakout was real, right? Um, and you thought that. Okay, well, this is resistance. This is resistance. We broke this on the weekend, and you were kind of suspect about it. And you thought this would be a deviation, and we'd come back inside the range. So I stated that the contrarian trade would have been that you could hedge or take a short from, I think we were around here yesterday, right? Somewhere here. And I stated that you could take a short right there, stop above the previous high, and you target this $55,000 marker. Okay. And why did I say that? Well, first of all, I really didn't even think that this would happen. But again, it's situations like this, when you think that things cannot happen like this, generally when things happen, right? Not all the time, but I'm actually surprised myself. Okay. But the point is, right, in this movement right here, the interesting thing about this was right out of the gate, as the CME markets open, okay, those markets pushed up a little bit, and then they just start to roll over overnight. So that means that either the Asian sellers joined into the frenzy, right? And the CME traders were probably on the same side as well, and they just really obliterated the market. Um, now, the question is, right, have we done anything um, significantly impactful? And does this mean that, okay, this was a false breakout and we're going to go back much lower? So personally, I think we got to wait till the end of the day now to see how that's going to pan out. And I'll tell you guys why. Okay. Uh, first things first, you got to understand that this was the previous resistance right here. Okay. Let's do this. This was the previous resistance right there. And this was another resistance, right? So price broke up, rolled back inside. By today, maybe at the latest tomorrow, what price needs to do is get this candle or get you know the price above this previous high to close. At the very least, um, maybe 57,500. At the very best, probably 58.3, 58.4. That's where we need to close the daily. So the daily, instead of looking like this candle, it needs to close basically around here. So then all this, by the end of the day, is all wick. Okay. So by the end of the day, the daily needs to look something like this. See this candle right here? Right? That's what it needs to look like. So you better pray that by the end of the day, the bulls start driving up the price. I think it's possible... I think a majority of the selling has already taken place because um, if we look right here, we just saw $2.2 billion in liquidations happen already. So clearly there's a lot of leverage traders, you know, in here, in here, maybe even, you know, over here who didn't take profit and now they just got destroyed on the way down, right? So this is a good sign. Um, you generally see a market coming close to the bottom or literally at the bottom uh, when number one, you know, two things happen, right? Uh, the first thing you see huge volume like this right near a key level, which was our $55,000 level that I just mentioned, right? As you can see right here, you know, here's that massive candle, massive volume. Okay. Number two, you want to see the market across the board hurt too. So you can see 24 hour, this liquidations indicator is showing $2.2 .2 billion dollars worth of liquidations were just hammered. And this is a good sign. But liquidations aren't enough. Okay. Sometimes what happens in the market is, yeah, it comes to a temporary bottom with huge selling. 
and the selling stops, but does the buying continue, right? Does this dip right here get bought up and through today and tomorrow, does it press up higher? See, that's when you have to take advantage of the liquidations if they are present. If you don't, well, then that means something is wrong with the market. And that means that we have wrongly anticipated um, you know, this movement right here as a breakout. And then this movement right here may not be the dip buying opportunity and we might be headed lower. So the first most obvious level to understand if we're going to break down lower is well, if we break this 55, six level, right? Say if we start closing candles under this, and again, I mean, this has to probably be like, I don't know, multiple one hour candles or maybe a, a strong, you know, four hour open and close below this area. Like, uh, you know, I'm sure there's gonna be traps here where um, in the middle of the day, you'll see one of the one hour candles closing down here, but then the follow up one hour candle closes back above aggressively. Generally, the market knows, you know, what are some key levels and, you know, most traders, technicians, algos will watch the market the same way that you and I are talking about right now, which is, you know, watching this level being defended. And if it's not defended right here, and if it starts breaking down, well, everybody jumps into another selling frenzy. And sometimes that second wave of selling frenzy could be good where, most of the market capitulates somewhere down here, you know, and we don't really make a much lower low. In fact, we just kind of turn around from here, create a base and then start pushing up. So that's the first area to understand if we're going to break lower. Do I think we're going to do that? I personally don't think so. I think, you know, a huge amount of selling took place right here. Um, but again, you know, just because selling took place doesn't mean buying is taking place, right? So you have to understand that, yeah, maybe the buyers are buying here, but will the buyers buy enough to keep pressing the market up higher and higher? And that remains to be seen. So first level, the defend is right here. Now the le next level, like I said, on the upside, we need to break above 57.5, uh, 58.3, 58.5. And then we can start talking about higher highs. After that, I mean, once we clean up, you know, this whole area right here, right? we have to start targeting this previous high, which is around 60,500, let's just say, right? You know, beyond that, I mean, it's just, you know, straight up like new highs probably, but we gotta fix the daily, uh, hopefully by today, okay? Because closing the daily inside the previous range generally is not a good sign. So you better hope that this thing turns out to be a huge buying wick by the end of the day, okay? Uh, is that clear so far? Yes, no? Everything good? Okay, perfect. All right, so um, for most of today, you know, I'm probably not even going to stare at my positions because um, most of my positions are underwater. It's going to just scare the shit out of me anyway. So it is what it is, right? <laughs> what the hell can you do? You know, you just got to wait for the market to turn around. Um, you know, it is what it is, right? Like sometimes you just got to let the market do its thing. As long as your invalidations haven't been hit, you know, the market hasn't changed structure. You know, instead of um, uh, avoiding, uh, instead of uh, facing your, your emotional impulse to want to sell because you're at a loss, you know, I'm just going to avoid it and just go to the beach and enjoy my time there, um, clear my head come back through the day, you know, around the four hour candle closes like four hours from now. Um, and then by the end of the day, and then I want to see what the damage truly is because for all I know, the beginning of the day, some garbage Asian sellers sell this, and then the U S sellers pick this up as market opens. And then we start driving the market up higher, right? It has happened quite a bit. So, you know, we'll see. Right. Okay. Um, so we covered Bitcoin now. Let's cover some indicators as well, right? So um, RSI on the four hour, I mean, nowhere near oversold. So, I mean, you can make the argument that, okay, we have to hit oversold, but not really necessary. You don't have to hit oversold, okay? Um, one hour has clearly hit oversold. Now, if you're, say, an RSI trader, well, what you kind of want to see is, you know, say the market does something like this, 
sweeps down again, but then the RSI does something like this and puts in a higher low. Well, that could be actually your, you know, buying opportunity right there. If you want to go long, that is okay. I mean, again, you know, if you're already in a position and you just want to hang tight, don't over leverage. Okay. Because again, we're not sure that if the market's going to break up, right. Um, from here, we could head down further. And if we do, well, does that, is that taken into your risk profile? Have you taken that kind of, you know, downside into, um, your, your positioning? Okay. And most people don't, right. You, you'll think that every opportunity like this is buy the dip. Well, okay. You could buy the dip, but you know, size according to your means, not because you think that by tomorrow you're going to get rich because tomorrow you might also be eating ramen if you're wrong and you don't want to be doing that. Okay. So I love the mentality of buying the dip and I completely agree with it, but not every sell-off um, is the opportunity to buy a dip, at least not until it's confirmed. Okay. Um, one good sign, Coinbase, uh, slightly leading, right? So uh, 56 to 86, 56 to 55 is a good sign, right? For now. So you want to see the Coinbase sellers, or I'm sorry, Coinbase buyers um, step up to the plate and really start driving the price up. Okay. And even Coinbase, I mean, we saw huge selling activity right here. So this is a good sign that you actually saw big selling, you know, in spot as well. Okay. Um, you know, here's, here's the, the Coinbase side. Now on the Delta, you can see right here, first of all, the volume. Okay. You see on the left right here, right. We saw 9704 worth of BTC buying, um, 9238 worth of selling. So positive Delta of 467 BTC, right? So, the majority of the selling was absorbed, but does that mean that we now have more buyers to drive up the price? Well, that will be seen by the end of the day, you know, how that pans out. You want to see, see this, you know, volume Delta right here start to rise as, um, well, not there on the one hour you want to see it. Okay. So here's what you want to see on the one hour. Okay. Very good sign right here is, very deep negative delta, right? With this huge red candle. So that's a good sign, okay? Now what you wanna see is on Coinbase, as prices go up, you want this positive delta to rise because this is nothing but net buying, right? This is net selling and this is net buying. So you wanna see net buying, especially on an exchange like Coinbase, start to create a base right here and then start driving a price and then you want to see the delta right here climb as well. Okay. Um, when that happens, generally the market is bottomed and we're going to start pressing up. Okay. Another good sign, like I said, uh, you know, a premium on, on a spot, as you can see, 56,375 and 56,328 on BitMEX. Okay. So these are, you know, signs that you sometimes get where the market is showing you, okay. Coinbase buyers, meaning the spot buyers are, are stepping up to the plate. It's a good sign. All right. <clears throat> um, if you want to long right now, by the way, probably, you know, a decent opportunity to long. Like we, we've swept a lot of levels right here, like on the way down, you pretty much destroyed everybody who went long all the way from Friday. So, you know, anyone from Friday on till yesterday has been completely just stopped out. So if you're thinking about going long, right, your stop has to be at least down here, which is around 54 or 500. All right. So just, you know, giving you all some markers to pay attention to. Um, let's see. Okay. So I think we covered that. Let's cover some more indicators. Uh, Bitcoin dominance dumping. So dominance dumping and price dumping um, and uh, altcoins dumping means everything is dumping, okay? But probably the better indication will also be how much is ETH BTC dumping compared to Bitcoin dominance. Well, actually, this is interesting. Now, ETH BTC is actually up for the day, okay? So this means that we didn't see a huge destruction of altcoins across the board. 
like we generally see in BTC, um, like we see uh, whenever Bitcoin dumps, right? Generally, whenever Bitcoin dumps, well, we see a huge destruction in USD value, but we also see a huge destruction in BTC value. And you don't see that right now. So this is actually kind of interesting to me. So let's see how, su how much sushi is down for the day. Wow, sushi is only down 3%. This is crazy. And Bitcoin is down 4.62%. Let's see how much ETH is down. ETH is only down 3.96%. Wow, this is, so see, th this is where, um, this is where you got to start working on um, how you look at the market in context of Bitcoin versus alts, right? This to me is fascinating, okay? The reason why it's fascinating is because, again, this is my mental um, calculation. I believe that because altcoins are generally much higher risk and much higher beta uh, than Bitcoin, they will almost always move at a percentage higher than BTC um, on the way down if the market itself is shaky. If the market itself is just doing some excess cleanup, like for example, you know, doing some um, uh, leverage cleanup with, with these liquidations and it's mainly targeting BTC and maybe altcoins don't have that much leverage like Bitcoin, like altcoins do, well then altcoins don't dump as much. So why does that matter? Well, it matters because the market is actually more focused on cleaning up Bitcoin leverage then it's worried about dumping ETH and dumping sushi and dumping good altcoins. And so when the market does not dump good altcoins like ETH or sushi at a significantly higher percentage than Bitcoin is down today, well, that means this is, you know, what I would call bullish selling, meaning I don't think the market is gearing up for a bigger sell off. Again, I could be wrong. Who knows? By tomorrow, we might dump more. But present moment, I don't think that's what the market is indicating. The market is indicating, hey, uh, okay, we get something is happening in the Bitcoin world, you know, that leads to dumping, and some of the algos will will dump uh, ETH and and uh, sushi and other altcoins. But you know, we're not going to dump sushi too much. We're not going to dump ETH too much. We're not going to dump Link too much because we believe that there's enough buyers in you know altcoins right now, right? So that's kind of what the market indicates to me at present moment is this might be, you know, like I said, quote unquote, bullish selling. Okay. And so hopefully by tomorrow or maybe even later today, what you might actually see, and, and here's another thing that I'll tell you. Okay. So generally when you start seeing, um, say Bitcoin coming close to a bottom, maybe forming a base, guess what happens? Altcoins will actually start moving up. And, and I mean good altcoins, like not your garbage, you know, micro cap altcoins. Those can be easily driven up. Like you could take $100,000 and drive it up 10%, right? Or lever it up to a million and drive it up 10%. But I mean ETH, okay? With ETH and Sushi and these good altcoins, those will start bottoming out first, okay? And here's another good sign that they might be bottoming out. Heavy selling, right? in the market going on with this red candle, but then now buy volume is increasing. See right there, the green bar and another green bar. So you want a base here and you want to see ETH starting to press up and out of this area before Bitcoin bottoms. That will indicate that Bitcoin is nearing a bottom or it will eventually bottom a little bit after ETH or a little bit after Sushi. Okay, is that pretty clear? Does that make sense to y'all? Yes, no. Um, I didn't get a response from anyone, so I will take it as uh, you guys understood. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> um, so Elizabeth is asking, um, VET and, and some Binance alts are breaking new all-time highs. That's a really good, uh, good assessment too. So, you know, here's let's just say, you know, V chain, right. I, for those of you who have been around since, you know, 2000, um, 
2018 or so, right? The thing about uh, VET is, again, one of the older coins, right, which had probably a whole lot of selling down here. And now, you know, these um, coins, which are more, I think, if I'm not mistaken, VeChain is uh, South Korean based, right? So sometimes what you see is on exchanges like Binance or Huobi, even when the Bitcoin markets are, are dumping, sometimes you'll see these markets start to break out. Why? Because a majority of the money flows are keeping an eye on Bitcoin or you know the, the major altcoins. And no one's really focusing on, on things like VeChain. So the path to the upside becomes easier because no one really has the guts to keep buying in, in a market that looks like it's going to dump more or, to, or it has dumped a lot, right? So what you want to do is in, in situations like this, if you want to take the other side of the bet, well, you can go long, you know, on coins like this. But remember, I mean, obviously it's a bit of a risk because if Bitcoin sells off further, maybe there's a chance that VeChain is impacted negatively too, right? Um, but again, you know, very possible that VeChain just keeps going up, especially given that it's had, you know, very nice stair-stepping movement right here. And now it's finally breaking out. It could be a decent breakout. And I could see, you know, maybe 10 cents up here, like this marker right here being hit over the next couple of days. Okay, so that's a good 20, 30% move. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, keep, keep an eye on those. And if you are a trader on Binance, I think it's pretty simple. You can keep your invalidation right here. Um, I mean, don't lever up too much. Again, in conditions like this, just, you know, you can, you can take up a spot position if you want to, okay? Uh, not investment advice, of course, right? Um, <clears throat> Vishal says, I have a stop loss on Sushi at 19. Should I stop deeper? Maybe add on after the four hours? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Sushi should come down any further, you know? So like this, let's put this marker right here, right? Let's do this, this. Okay, I, I don't think Sushi should come down any further. Um, I mean, in case it does, like if it was me, you know, well, first of all, I don't have stops on my positions right now, um, simply because you know I'm able to um, manage my positions actively. But if I were to keep a stop, I'd keep it down here, so around like eighteen dollars or so. Um, not investment advice, but that's that would be my risk, you know, profile. Like I could take a hit all the way down here, you know. But this would also mean like there's some really weird stuff going on in the market if if it comes down here. All right. But again, I don't, I don't kind of see that happening. Um, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. Right. Like when markets are weird, they could just stay weird for a while, you know, um, cause markets are generally looking for, you know, liquidity and, and capitulation and, um, how much, uh, how much asset that they could pick up from say weaker hands, you know, especially when it's bullish selling, like, there's a difference you got to be able to tell between you know, when the market is just pulling back and retracing in terms of quote unquote bullish selling versus when it's really selling off and everyone who's going to catch the knife is going to get destroyed on the way down. Um, and so at present moment, I believe the market is indicating that we're not going to dump any further or you know, if we do, it's like going to be temporary wicks. That's what I'm kind of noticing. And, and I believe altcoins are kind of showing us that they might be ready and, and gearing up for a bottom to be created. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I think that's pretty much it. Huh. So Bitcoin does have this, you know, big rising wedge that's being created. Um, you know, do I think the rising wedge is going to play out? I don't know, maybe, but kind of would have figured like we'd still make one more move up. Uh, but obviously I'm not going to bet on that, you know, especially if by the end of the day, 
Like we can't climb up back towards this previous high, which the market clearly knows and recognizes, right? So if there are some good, smart traders in the market, um, algo is trying to defend key levels. They bring price back up towards 58, 58, two or something. Uh, if we don't do that, we close down here. Um, I don't know. I would have to reassess and probably put in some stops or reduce size or um, close out some positions. You know, in some way, I'd have to figure out my, you know, my risk going forward. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens for the rest of the day. We got 11 hours to go. It'll be a long 11 hours, but you know, we've already. I feel like we've already done uh, dealt with the with the brunt of the selling. So, you know. It is what it is. Let's let's see what happens through the rest of the day. Okay. Um, <clears throat> on my Twitter feed, uh, I retweeted this. You know, it seems like there's like a eighteen thousand Bitcoin deposit um, on uh, Gemini. So who knows? Maybe some of the selling came from there. I, I'm not really sure how legit that was, but something to pay attention to. Okay. Uh, so this is on my Twitter feed, of course. Um. Other than that, I'm not seeing anything else to talk about. I think that's pretty much it. All right. Um, so yeah, I'll wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much. Uh, do you have any other questions? Anything else I can answer? Dot, okay. Yeah, so I mean, I, I would probably figure most altcoins are going to look the same right now. <clears throat> so, you know, uh, even DOT right here, right? I mean, took out its previous low. Um, hopefully, it starts seeing, you know, a bottom being formed here, just like other altcoins. We kind of hovered on this trend line a whole lot. Um, so, hopefully, this is really the bottom that it needed. This area of liquidity is what it needed. Um, you know, hopefully, it's up from here. But you know, other than that, you know, dot. I think on a, on a daily basis looks pretty damn good, right? It looks like maybe a big consolidation period happening, and hopefully it just starts you know pressing up from here. But again, by the end of the day, we should understand better what altcoins are going to do or thinking about doing. All right. Uh, it has taken out its long term trend upward. Uh, I don't think so. Where do you see that? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it has taken out its long-term trend. I'm not sure what you mean. Um, but yeah, this this is the long-term trend, okay? Four hour, yeah, but, okay, but you still gotta look at, if, if you're looking at the long-term trend, this is the long-term trend, right? Like on the four hour, you know, what do you mean, all right? These are still higher lows. Yeah, you haven't put in a significant higher high, but this is just a mini area where it has posted a high, or I'm sorry, a high, a lower high, a low, a lower low, right? But it was already still kind of in a large consolidation. So you got to take it in context of that as well. Okay. Yeah. So I think, I think it's totally fine. Um, you know, again, most altcoins are going to take the same route as Polkadot. So whatever happens, you know, through the rest of the day, I'm sure Polkadot will face sort of the, the same, you know, um, the same price movement. Okay. All right. That's it, folks. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, my, my computer is about to die. So I'll catch up with you all through the day. Okay. Cheers. I hope this analysis was helpful.